what's up everybody i am back i know jay's been holding it down for me i've been sick since like the day after christmas and um i'm at 95 percent but i have to ask you guys a question where's all of my gym stars what's up everybody it's your girl brit easy aka fresh from the salon bka the people's champ and, and so much has changed since i last talked to you new hairdo you see it bam bam and it's a new year happy 2020 so today we're going to compare video games first up on the list we have call of duty modern warfare 2 or are we rolling with black ops so we got the call of duty modern warfare 2 or call of duty black ops what was your favorite for me it was um modern warfare 2 that's what i started off this is when i was streaming not heavily it's like you know i was streaming um asking jay to send his people over to support me or help me to play this was like way before lj came and lj came and then i couldn't play anymore but uh what modern warfare 2 was my favorite black ops i couldn't get down with black ops at all the only place i stayed at on black ops was um nuketown so did you guys like nuketown that was my favorite i felt like i could get easy kills on there and pretty much i just played that because it was easier for me but my favorite thing that i always love to do was just capture the flag i was good at that i wasn't good in domination was it domination or just capture the flag no it was domination domination is where you capture the flag you you well you capture the flags by standing on it for a certain amount of time i was good at that i was good at that so what was your favorite drop it down below was it call of duty modern warfare 2 or Black Ops. I mean, them dolls mess me up in Black Ops. It just, it just messed me up. But hey, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and drop it down below. Peace. Hey, hey, get out my seat. Get out my seat. Hey, look, man. Hey, I wanted to let y'all know, man, that mine. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Y'all already know what mine was, man. Y'all know that this is how the channel started. I started with Modern Warfare 2. I probably played that game for two or three years. We used to do the inspirational vitamins and all of that stuff, man. This was the ultimate spawn trap. If you wanted an easy nuke, demolition on favela, trap them at the top of the street. It, bro, that, that spawn trap was almost unbreakable, especially when you was playing trash bag one on one, bro. It was just a shooting gallery. It was just pound, pound, pound. One person sit in the window. One person sit on the left side of the top of the street. One person sit on the right side of the top of the street and aim in. They always spawned at the same place. We just, we, it was a shooting gallery, man. But this right here. Woo, this bring back memories, boy. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Hey, Nuketown was tough, man. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. It's close. If I had to choose one, I would probably choose Modern Warfare 2. Probably the worst game of all time as far as balanced. But it was so much fun because everything was broke. That's how it goes, man. And then Black Ops was probably one of the most balanced games of all time. But the kill streaks. It was balanced, but it didn't care about bad people. So when you had somebody that was bad, like we, bro, we had, we would routinely have lobbies where people would be five and seventy-three, and we would, we would be up over a hundred kills a piece. I got like, carried a lot. Yeah, you <laughs> did, but I mean, but you capped the flags though. Somebody got to cap them flags, cause I ain't capping the flag. Well, actually, I did cap the flag. Me and you capped flags. Everybody else was kill whore. All but I hey, have to say is, uh, going back to Modern Warfare 2, that was the birth of. Y'all said two pieces. Yes. Uh, yeah. All, all those that. good things. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And we're going to get into that, man. Speaking of which, man, influence and all of that good stuff, man. Um, The 2K, it's some, some lists have been going around. And when I'm talking about the lists that have been going around, man, hey, if you like that hoodie right there, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, or whatever. We can do any team. We got nine, like literally any team in the, in the league. We can change the ball, and then we'll change the logo at the bottom, man. We'll hook you up, man. Uh, hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. You should be following me on Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that anyway, man. I'm about to do the Falcons one, but it's trash. Anyway, speaking of influence and all of that good stuff, my wife just had this awesome segue. There are lists going around, and uh, this is Chef Ankle Bully right here, and he's just talking about how the 2K... Um, you know, what, what 2K's YouTubers and streamers of the last decade were the most influential, man. Here's our Chris Move, iPod, Shake. You can't you can't do a list without Shake. Uh Yo Stacks, which is Stacks Montana, if I'm not mistaken. Bass Plug, Orlando and Chicago, Nadex, 
uh, Hank the Tank, Steezo, Brutal Sim on the scene, Wicked That Me, with a next video for y'all. Uh, Man Man Grindhard, Pretty Boy Mellow, and then, you know, he got some other stuff. He's like, uh, more, it's more to it, obviously. He's Duke Dennis, uh, Cold, Cold Man, I'm Davis, uh, Sin, Troy Dan, G-Man, uh, you know, Ticino, Cash Nasty, obviously, Fredo, uh, Agent, Brother Jones, Detroit. Oh, it's Detroit T. I don't know who that is, man. Uh, G Sice, uh, Joe Buddy. I like the other did Young Dirk and uh, Cheese Hall. Like I don't know who who Joe Buddy is or Detroit T. E. Man, I don't I don't know these guys, man. But um, you know, if we talking about influential nature and all of that good stuff, then hey, it is what it is, man. Like it's it's your it is literally your opinion. Oh, and, and Man Man also came and he said, uh, Cash Nasty, Chris Smooth, K Spade, Shake and Bake, Red City Boy, Laristocrat, Oprah Side, uh, Pretty Boy Fredo, uh, Prince Tatter, which is so Illuminati, and Troy Dan. And he's like, hey, let's debate, man. And so, you know, like, it, it, it it's one of those things where uh, some people were like, you know, Laristocrat and, and Red City Boy, and like I said, me and Man Man talk about this all the time. There will be no badge videos. Uh, there will be no how to earn badges, no glitch videos, none of that stuff. The aristocrat, that's what he did until they banned him and stuff like that. And that was it. Red City Boy was the first person that's dribbling and really was just... <laughs> and he made the whole rep race popular. Like, you can't take that away just because you may not respect it or you might not think it's that influential. It don't mean it. It's just like if they did a Call of Duty one. I would likely not make the list. But if they made one, it would be one of those where I should make the list, right? Because even though my channel never really blew up in Call of Duty, and I never was popular as far as YouTubers in the in the Call of Duty community. That was not a YouTuber that didn't one know who I was, two steal my material, and three play with me on a daily basis. It wasn't. I mean, I played with Mark and Jay, um, Blade. Uh, uh, Thunder, Thunder still say two piece to this day. There will be no two piece, huh? If it wasn't for me, there will be no for else. And it, all this stuff, there will be no else. There will be like my, my, my lingo not only spawned the whole network that Snacks, uh, Snacks, you know, he ran that network. Not only that, but also, um, what was I gonna say? My lingo not only spawned that. But I was the first person that where everybody was so uptight and cookie cutter and stuff like that. I was like the first person that made it okay to be yourself. Just be loud, boisterous, and boom. And like, that's what a whole lot of YouTubers are right now. So I pay, you can say that I paved that way. And even though nobody knew who I was, everybody knew who I was. They just didn't know they did. So you can't say like, you can never say who's the most influential because a lot of times, smaller YouTubers get their content stolen and it gets buried because nobody you know because a bigger youtuber did it and then they think the bigger youtuber did it and all that anyway like i was saying though a lot of people getting their feelings hurt by these lists and stuff like that because they not on them i don't understand like once you get past chris move cash shake k spade and guys like that man i would even and you know ipod all them guys like like um i i am a little bit upset that nobody put um chase money on there because chase money was really one of the first people to, to really do that my career and really do it in a way where it was just like I'm loud, boisterous, and I'm funny with it and all that. So I, it's a little bit upsetting that nobody put Chase Money up there, but Chase is on to another thing. He still does 2K videos, but I, it's surprising to me that nobody put Chase Money on there. And just because they're not on there doesn't mean that people, you know, are disrespecting them or anything like that. That just means that they couldn't think of them at the time. But sometimes you don't come to mind. Chase Money comes to mind because that's my homeboy. It is what it is. Anyway, um, y'all let me know what y'all think down there, man. Who is y'all's Mountain Rushmore? Like I said, a lot of people will probably be like, why K-Spade? But K-Spade made, K-Spade made Rick or Pro-Am cool back to what it was called back then. He made it cool, man. It is what it is, man. So, uh, up next, man, we got your boy Chalk. And, uh, and he said the content coming different on the, on the, uh, on the, on the thing, man, on his channel, man. So he said, hey, playing as an NBA 2K mascot in the hood. I don't know why people always, you got to, if you put in the hood on anything, I guess it makes, makes it, makes it better or believable or something like that. I don't know. But hey, check it out. 
He's got a, a Phoenix Suns gorilla outfit, and he's out there playing, man. You, hey, go check the video out. Check it out. See what you think. Um, these one-on-one -on -one videos, they confuse me a lot of times, man. Like I said, it's a good video. It's a good watch. Um, everybody look, you know, every every it's all fine. But the thing that trips me out is how people play one-on-one, -on -one, and maybe it's just because I played ball on a. I guess seemingly high level than other people, man. Like I said, it's a good video and all that good stuff. It's amazing that he's able to hit a shot or even see what the hell he's doing in this thing, just like just like when the uh, the professor does it with the with the other joint. But when we play one on one, we play everything is one defense call fouls and one stop. That's that's how we play. Obviously, if you get hammered or something, they don't give it to you. You gonna get it. But we play one stop, which means when you take a shot. If you miss the shot, it's my ball. Do am I the only one that play one on one like that? I can't be the only person that play one on one like that. Everything's one. Defense call fouls, unless it's a bad foul or something like that. Then obviously we're not gonna argue about it. And we play one stop. If you miss, it's a turnover. You don't get the opportunity to take a shot. And then I'm playing all the defense up here. And before I touch the ground, you sprint around me, get a rebound, and get a, 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 a easy put back. Like, that's garbage to me. That's just to me. But, hey, like I said, that's, I don't know. If that's, I mean, that's how they was playing. They, they weren't playing like that in here. And I've not seen any YouTubers play that way, which is like when Tay 2 Sick was talking about, you know, you be seeing these one-on-ones and they don't be the most entertaining. And it's just like, I be like, because a lot of people can't play ball but that's just how we always play man that's how you play one-on-one -on -one. those are the one-on-one -on -one rules if i ever one-on-one -on -one anybody in the 2k community those will be the rules everything's one we play one stop and defense calls fouls that's how you play if i fouled you i'm gonna give you the foul i'm not gonna let you take the but hey unless i hammered you or hey we and we can even watch that rule away call your own foul but everything's one and we play, uh, and it's one stop. Like I don't, I don't get it though, cause I, I, I always hated not playing one stop because if I make you miss the shot, you shouldn't be able to just sprint around me and go like, what am I gonna do? Some people would say that's hustle, that's BS. There's no way that I could completely commit to playing defense on you, especially if you're taking a shot at the perimeter, and then be able to go get the board. Like explain to me how I'm gonna do that. I can't completely close you out and then turn. What I'm gonna do? close out turn box out in the air like you can't do it man and it got to the point where people would play me and they know the reason that we start playing one stop with the people that can really play because people would do that they, they literally just throw the ball up there and sprint to the rim because they know i'm gonna play defense it, it was garbage but hey it is what it is that's why we play like that man to to avoid stuff like that because of the fact i mean man, man whatever man let me know what y'all think though if you think the video is good if you saw the video um if you're gonna go watch the video hey let me know man but hey up next man uh, for all the people that need that uh, the Christmas news, bro, the badge glitches and all that are out there. I just want you to beware. Um, you got one glitch. Listen, man, I'm going to tell you straight up. Anything that says my player nation is probably legit, this guy right here did a, did a, did a pretty good video. You see the name right there, man. Go on, check him out. Um, and it actually works because it just like, like all these glitches, man, they're not really glitches. They just are ways to allow you to play My Player Nation over and over and over. And if you're able to play My Player Nation over and over, you know that you get hella bad points from My Player Nation. So if hey, if you want to do that, check that out. Listen, man, do it at your own discretion. But please back all your stuff up off system, my guy. Because if you do this, there's a 99% chance that you're going to lose your player. So back everything up. Or better yet, just don't do it. Because you could end up with a situation like this right here. Our favorite subject, Honzy. Boy, let me show y'all something, man. Your boy Honzy think he's slick, man. He said this is the unlimited VC glitch. Bro, do not do this. You're gonna lose your character. You're gonna lose everything. You, you, it's a very high chance that you're gonna screw everything up. You see this black screen right here, man? This is what gave the whole thing away. He's saying that you can go into, you can go in there, hit up, um, you know, act like you're gonna buy it, disconnect and all that good stuff. And then he says, you know, you reload the game and then you'll have the VC. It'll buy the VC even though you cancel the transaction. 
This black screen tells me everything I need to know. Why? Because right after this black screen, we get this. Now, now look at what I'm telling y'all. He did all the stuff that he did, right? Test network connection, all that good stuff. Uh, test, what, did, did test network connection, delete save data, all that stuff. You risking killing your player and everything, right? For some VC. All right, now look at this. Boom. The screen goes black. When have you ever seen 2K blackout while you're loading the game, right? Like you load the game up. Like, look, 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 look. He launches 2K, loads the game up, boom, goes black, and then comes. That's where he inserted the other track. And and for those that will be like, eh, eh, maybe that's not the case, bro. He's got an overlay, right? Like this, this is the this is the definitive evidence. He has an overlay, right? So no matter what happens behind the screen, even if 2K did go black, that overlay would still be up there, right? Am I right? The overlay would never go away. He's changing all these screens. The overlay is still there. When this screen goes black because he's inserting the other track, you can plainly see that the overlay is gone. He should have just spliced it together, something like that, or crossfaded it, and then it would have been unnoticeable. But because, you know, look, it's fake, okay? So don't follow this right here, man. Your boy Holmes, they always trying to get somebody like that, and he come back, and he's like, hey, you got the VC. Um, you know, like at first you would think, well, let's look at how much VC, and it's like, okay, he's like, you gotta buy Dunk and some more stuff. Hey, let's, uh, he, he say he bought 15,000, so two, seven, five, six, and then over here is 17, five, six. But like I said, there's no point at which you loading 2K that you're gonna get a total black screen. And even if you did, your your overlay don't go away when you get a black screen off of off of the Xbox. Anyway, man, just be wary of that, man. Don't trust these glitches. Don't do these glitches. Don't do them. Don't do them. Don't do them, man. But I gotta get up out of here, man. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what y'all like the best down in the comments. Modern Warfare 2 or Black Ops 1. Modern Warfare 2 on Favela, the best spawn trap ever, or Black Ops 1. This is the birth of the best map ever. We are the reason that when this came out, you could not vote a map more than twice because we used to get out there in the lobby and be like, Nuke Town! But we'll make people play Nuke Town for three hours straight. And then they made us stop doing that. But I'm out of here, man. Y'all holler at me next time. Godspeed!